vinegar eels in kombucha. Take a look at these things swimming around in this video. Those are vinegar eels and that is actual kombucha. This is a video that someone sent me some time ago asking what these are, how to get rid of them. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about what vinegar eels are, how you get them, how you prevent them, and what to do if you do end up with vinegar eels. My name is Liz. Welcome to the Booch channel. I've been brewing kombucha for over a decade and I also own a small kombucha business where we sell mostly at farmers markets. The first thing I want you to know is that vinegar eels are 100% avoidable and they are non-harmful. They're non-parasitic, so you won't get sick if you accidentally did drink some kombucha with the vinegar eels in it. I hope you didn't. So vinegar eels are not actually vinegar, they're not eels. They are a nematode, which is a round worm-like organism that it, they're bottom feeders Then they live in lots of different environments and they feed on bacteria. So what happens is when Raw vinegar, and that's your key here, there's a difference between raw vinegar and distilled vinegar. When you use raw vinegar, or kombucha is exposed to the raw vinegar, the nematodes feed off of the bacteria in our kombucha. And that's how they repopulate and end up in, in your mooch. You may be wondering, well, why do people use vinegar in their kombucha? And there's a few explanations for this. First is, there are some people that clean their equipment with vinegar to do an extra, um, what's the freaking word? To, to do like a san <laughs> to sanitize, right? To do an extra cleaning of their, of their jars. I used to do that when I was a very beginner. I think I did it for about six months and then I stopped. But they will rinse out their jar and their spoon and whatever else they use in the vinegar, white vinegar, white distilled vinegar, let it dry and then use it. So what's happened is people not understanding the difference between distilled and raw vinegar use raw vinegar. And the gentleman that sent me this video, that's how he got the vinegar eels is he had cleaned his jar in raw vinegar. He even rinsed it. So I'll talk more about that in a second. So that's one way. The other way is there's, so I used to belong to this Facebook group a long time ago. So I started brewing in 2012. Okay, so in about 2013, I discovered Facebook groups. They were probably there before, but it was like a, a new discovery for me. And one of the Facebook groups was a, was a kombucha brewers. I think it was, well, I don't know, remember what it was called, but I ended up leaving. That's not important. The Facebook group, I was learning a lot because I was now around people that had been brewing for 10, 20, 30 years even. And so some people would add a little bit of distilled white vinegar to their kombucha to like finish it off to make sure it had that sour edge to it. Then there were also some, so that's one way. Then there were also some people that would, if they were short on starter tea, would make up the difference using white distilled vinegar. So in those two scenarios, I want to let you know that you don't need that. So if you're using the white vinegar, and if you do it and that works for you and, that, and you like it, then that's fine. I'm not telling you you're wrong. But for people that may be new or this is the first time hearing about this, if you want your kombucha to be more sour, just let it ferment a little bit longer, a couple days, test it daily, see if it's where you like it. And when it is, go ahead and bottle it. The second one we talked about using distilled white vinegar to make up for starter tea that you don't have, is simple. So whatever starter tea you have with your SCOBY, just add about a cup of fresh sweetened tea. You can even do a half a cup. So if you're only shy, a quarter cup. And a quarter cup can make the difference between getting mold and not getting mold. I made a video on that where I actually got mold and I'll link it down below if you want to watch that after you've watched this. So because the ratio of fresh tea to already brewed or already made kombucha with the SCOBY um, is, is so similar, it's not going to take long for the kombucha and the SCOBY to ferment and convert over the new fresh tea. So I would say three to five days, five to seven, just to be sure. Just go with five to seven, actually. And then you have all the starter tea you need. So you don't really need white vinegar. How to prevent vinegar eels is don't put raw vinegar in your kombucha. Again, white distilled vinegar. I have a bottle over here. White distilled vinegar. I'm sure most of us have a bottle of this. 
and I don't know about people um, outside of the US do you guys use this because this is in pretty much every American household Bragg's raw vinegar there's there's lots of different types of vinegar if you shop at farmers markets there's some uh, producers that make raw vinegars as well so just be careful with that one thing I read said that when your raw vinegar has sat for quite a while and mine has it's it's probably a couple years old that's when the nematodes show up and I looked I didn't see any they said you could also place it in the dark for a couple hours and then come in with a flashlight and see if they're there it's not that big of a deal to me I don't think I'll be using this I'll probably just get a new one so what to do, so maybe you're here because you did get vinegar eels. So what to do if you get them is you need to toss everything. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I know that can be painful. Toss your jar, toss the utensil you've used, a spatula or maybe a big spoon. Toss out your glass, anything that's came in contact with the kombucha that has been infected or any, any, any utensils that have even been exposed to the raw vinegar. So the guy that sent me this said that um, after his, the first batch where there was a lot of the vinegar eels, he, um, he rinsed everything, he washed it, put in a dishwasher, he even boiled it to sanitize it. And the next time he made kombucha, he still had the vinegar eels. It was a lot less, but he still had them. So toss everything, including your SCOBY, any starter tea and start fresh. You can always grow a SCOBY from a store bought or buy it from a friend. Buy it from me if you want one. Send me, a, uh, leave me a comment down below. The other thing to look out for is if you're buying a SCOBY from someone, and I haven't heard this too much, but if you're buying a SCOBY from someone, you may want to take the time to ask, has your the SCOBY, the kombucha, ever been exposed to raw vinegar? Because I have heard a couple stories, very rare, of people getting vinegar eels because the SCOBY they purchased had them. Yuck, gross. So what did we learn today, my friends? We don't use any raw vinegar in our kombucha. If you want to use white distilled vinegar because you want to make up for starter tea or you want to give it a sour edge, you can do that, but you don't have to. And if you've been staring at my beautiful jar back here, I want to let you in on what I got brewing. So this is kombucha vinegar, fire cider. Have you heard of fire cider? It's been around for a long time, I think. Rosemary, what's her name? Anyway, it's been around for a long time. Rosemary Gladstar started it. But I don't like using raw vinegar. I'm definitely not going to use it at my commercial kitchen. So I had some old kombucha vinegar sit around. So I said, let's try it. So I'm going to have a video coming out probably in about a month. I just started this. We have cranberries, orange, lemon, jalapenos, turmeric, horseradish, do I keep looking at the video, not you guys? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Garlic, red onion, ginger, and cranberries. Did I already say that? Isn't it pretty? So beautiful. So beautiful. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping in. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Or if you've experienced vinegar eels before, uh, I would love to know what happened, how you got them, how you got rid of them. And then it also gives people coming behind you an opportunity to learn from your experiences. Thanks for stopping in today. You can pop the like button if you'd like, and I'll see you in the next one.